The next thing that we're going to focus on is the resources tab, which is particularly useful if you're working with things like sessions and cookies. So inside of PHP, when we go ahead and set cookies or sessions, these are going to appear under cookies. So let's go ahead and just take a look at an example. It doesn't really matter what language you're working with. However, you're setting uh, sessions or cookies, it's going to look exactly the same. But let's go ahead and just start sessions in PHP. And we'll go ahead and access the session super global. And let's just say user ID equals one. So you might be signing a user in. I'm not going to go over the complexities of how sessions work in PHP. But essentially, when we land on index.php, which is the file I've just modified, you can see that this now contains a table with all of the cookies that you're storing. So because this is a session, if we just open these up a little bit more, we've got PHP ses ID or session ID, which is just the standard name for any PHP session stored. We have a value here which corresponds to the file stored on your server, which contains that session data. We have the domain here that it's served on. So if you uh, had, say, more uh, uh, more tabs open, you would see lots of different file, uh, lots of different sort of items here that you could click through and see all of the cookies that are stored for each domain that you're on. We have a path, the expiry. Uh, this has no expiry because we are working with a session, and we have the size as well here. So it works in exactly the same way. So what we're now just very quickly look at is setting a cookie in PHP. And uh, this will reveal a little bit more information because sessions are obviously sort of stored server side. So let's just quickly look at an example of setting a cookie so we can see how this varies. So let's just set one called data. We'll enter some data in here. And the third argument, we need an expiry. So let's go ahead and say expiry is a new date time object. And let's uh, say it expires in two days time. So now what we can do is extract the timestamp. So we can say get time stamp and we can go ahead and refresh. And you can see here that's added a cookie. Now obviously these are this is raw data. So we can see this uh, value in here in plain text, which is a good uh, explanation of why you shouldn't store uh, uh, secure or personal data in cookies. Uh, we see all the same data here. So we see the size, uh, we see the expiry this time because we know it expires in two days. So this will represent uh, the date and time in two days time. And the only thing we can't necessarily do in here is actually modify the cookie value. In tools like Firebug, you can do this, but I'm sure there are uh, extensions available for Chrome that will allow you to modify the cookie data. But what we can do is we can go ahead and uh, we can delete these. So we can remove cookies as well. And we can also remove the PHP session as well. So when we refresh, we don't see that PHP session ID. We just see that cookie again because we're hitting this, uh, this file again. So if you were to dive into other technologies that allow you to store data, you have things like WebSQL, you have IndexedDB, uh, you have local storage as well, which is probably more used if you're using JavaScript APIs uh, to store data. Uh, and you have things like the application cache as well. But probably mainly you'll be within this cookies section, uh, either examining the value of cookies or go ahead, going ahead and removing them if you don't need them anymore. So it's always useful to know that you can access all of this information. And that's all through the resources tab.